Hey everybody, Randy Ridings here with Quad Yak. Uh, you might notice that won't float. So this is not the Quad Yak, but I wanted to show you what I got about a year ago when, when the Quad Yak was in the fire. Um, I went out and got a recumbent because I wanted to keep the same muscle groups trained, so I wanted to ride in the same position to keep my legs in shape. So today I'm gonna do some riding in uh, Wilson's Creek Battlefield over near Springfield, Missouri. They've got a really nice uh, trail. You'll see that in a little bit. Probably the question I get asked most is, is that thing hard to ride? And by that, people mean you know, it's obviously heavier than a regular bike. In fact, it's about five times heavier than most bikes. So it does take quite a bit more energy and effort to push it around, especially up hills. What I've decided to do for this video then is to compare riding my recumbent and the quad yak on the same terrain. Three laps around Wilson Creek. I'll start off with some scenes of the ride itself. At the end of each lap I was giving a little bit of uh, you know, how long it had taken me to get around and miles per hour average and then I'll follow that with some stats from the ride, heart rate, calories burned, uh, that sort of thing to give you guys a good idea of the difference between riding quad yak and riding a regular bike. So first lap, right at five miles, 25 minutes. If I could do five and 25 around this, uh, that's five minute miles, 12 miles an hour on average. Lap two completed, 10 miles total. And I did that lap in about a minute faster than the first lap, in about 24 minutes. Okay, third lap in right at 24 minutes again. So I've had a 25, a 24, and a 24. And I passed the hour mark, and I was just over 12 miles total at that time. So that all checks. Uh, to show the, uh, the mileage thing it's showing about 17 18 sometimes 18 19 so it's probably just called straight away flat speed about 18 besides numbers divisible by six are better for figuring out mileage Contrast that straightaway with the hill I just climbed. I am now doing 4.2 miles an hour, and I'm breathing pretty hard. I can still talk, just barely. Back to hill climbing at four and a half miles an hour. So if I can cruise about 18 miles an hour on flat ground, and I'm going up and down the same hills starting and stopping at the same elevation. Why doesn't my average come out to 18 miles an hour? I go down the hill about 30, 
climb the hill about four and a half. And the reason is that although you do go quite a bit faster, you don't even probably double your speed going down these hills. But I'm only going about a third of my speed going up and it takes so much longer. So when you average out distance over time, if you have hills that you're going to go down, they will serve to slow your overall time. the only time I've had even hit my brakes today. Um, I gotta get on them a little bit at the corner of the entrance. I am on my way back up to Wilson Creek Battlefield in Republic, Missouri, uh, this time with the quad yak. So the plan today is to go do a couple of laps. The park has about a five mile loop road and a nice bike lane on the inside. I checked before that I could ride there with Quad Yak. They saw some pictures of it and finally just decided uh, it's a bike, it fits in the lane, good enough. I'm hoping today for about eight miles an hour. It's quite hilly and I'm but I'm geared better on this than the recumbent but I'm also heavier. I'll post updates as I go. Done the first lap of five miles in 36 minutes. I'm gonna give myself a minute on that lap. I stopped a couple of times to mess with the camera. So I think if I'd ridden straight through and didn't do that, it'd been another minute. So that is seven minute miles opposed to the five minute miles I was doing on my recumbent. So seven minute miles, that's about eight and a half miles an hour. I'll do that when I think. <laughs> Here's my second lap. Uh, look at the lap speed now. at 7.7 .7 miles an hour. First one was eight miles an hour. I'm on this back stretch, I'm going directly into the wind. So that's got to be robbing me a little bit, maybe a mile an hour. And I know from other rides in this thing that I can cruise at about 12 miles an hour flat pavement with no wind. And I'm only at about 10, 10 and a half. So this wind is taking a mile an hour off of me. Alright, I am back at the car. Review activity? Well, yes. Yes, I would. So, distance, 14.75 miles in two hours and five minutes. That paced out at eight minutes and 30 seconds a mile. All right, burned 1,900 calories. Uh, my average heart rate was 150. My maximum was 182. My ascent, 961 feet so it's over 300 per lap this one will probably be listed with or just after the recumbent trip I did out here because this is the trip that's comparing to that to see um, how how this kind of vehicle compares to a regular bike now I gotta say I pushed a lot harder on this I'll go back and see if I can't find some of the charts you know this says I burned 1900 calories on three rounds uh, we'll see what it what it shows for the same on a recumbent. There's not a straight line correlation between uh, the the energy I expend on this and the energy I expend on a regular bike. I definitely push harder with this. 
you just have to. You start going up a hill, and you you know you've got to keep a cadence up to go up that hill. You can't, you know, it doesn't work to just go pedal one. You you've got to keep going, and so you push harder, and that's part of the point. Uh, I was looking for something to to push me harder, and came up with this idea and built it, and and you know it weighs in at about 130 pounds or so right now, I think. Um, that's a lot to push around. It's a lot to push up a eight, nine percent grade on a hill. So it's doing what I wanted to do. It's giving me a workout and it also lets me go on land and water. So let's look at some numbers. Over this 15 mile course, it took me 125 minutes or two hours and five minutes to ride that in the quad yak where the recumbent was only 73 minutes. I averaged a little over seven miles an hour in the quad yak, 12.3 in the recumbent, but I burned about twice as many calories, 1,909 calories in the quad yak, and 965 in the recumbent, meaning I was burning 129 calories per mile in the quad yak and almost exactly half that, 65 calories per mile on the recumbent. That to me is the most critical number, that it takes per mile almost exactly twice as many calories. Uh, my heart rate didn't change a whole lot. I, I was pushing a little harder with the quad yak over a, a quite a bit greater amount of time, uh, but my I kept my heart rate uh, at 150 beats per minute average and 143 on the recumbent because I, you know, I kind of gauge my energy expenditure level by my heart rate and try to keep that to the 140, 150 beats per minute. And it's kind of a goof I figured out from that average that I would have had 18,750 heartbeats in the quad yak and only 10,439 heartbeats in the recumbent. So while I was looking at some of these charts, something uh, came to my attention that both days I rode almost exactly two hours, just a few minutes over two hours, but almost the exact same amount of time. Um, on the quad yak, that's only just shy of 15 miles, where in the recumbent is just shy of 25 miles. Three laps versus five laps around that five mile course. <clears throat> so this is kind of interesting because what it shows here is the energy expenditure over the same amount of time. So over the same amount of time in the recumbent I rode 1.7 times the distance and 1.4 times the elevation while using only 0.84 times the calories. So you notice um, on the left hand chart I only went uh, up and down 961 feet in elevation where I went 1,319 feet of elevation climb on the recumbent and during that same amount of time I still burned way more calories um, on the quad yak ride by about 300 calories uh, during that same amount of time even though I covered much less distance much less elevation and I found that kind of interesting. And the last thing I'd like to uh, make a comparison on is my max speed I went back and checked and I hit 32 miles an hour in the recumbent and only 29 miles an hour in the quad yak uh, max speed. Well, enjoy a little video here at the end. Uh, this first one is some wild turkeys I saw. I'll probably do a ride like this again at a later time over a flat course, 20-30 miles. This shows me that I burn about twice as many calories on a hilly route as I would in a regular bike. Uh, but I don't think it's quite that extreme on a flat course. We'll see. Please remember to like, share, and subscribe, uh, comment, any other tests you want me to run with this, uh, things you want to know about it. This was to answer the question I get all the time which is how much harder is a quad jack to ride than a regular bike 
And I think this does a pretty good job of answering that. Thank you all for joining me. I'm Randy Writings, and this is The Quadiac.